Hello, welcome friends to the Starship Schrodinger's Destiny devlog. We have reached the milestone 0.3. We originally thought we'd take about a year to do the version from 0.2 to version 0.3, but it's been more like five. So why is that? Well, extended scope. Extended scope is what I would say. You start off with a plan and then you just keep having to do more and more things and more and more things. This version, I wanted to push the animation and the puppeting systems so that they could do things like travel along smooth curves or uh, allow objects and characters to be carried by other objects and characters like a person in a car or a gun in a hand. So, as well as the old puppeting system that we still got there in the system, I added a new one for individually uh, editing each keyframe in real space able to change the vectors and the tangents of the curves um, and adjust in each keyframe even forwards and backwards through time individually. Moving cars around a map at life scale is kind of tricky. Can you imagine running whole blocks with a car in your hand? No, no, no. We need to be able to change the scale of the animator. So now the animator can be a giant towering over the whole island, moving the cars along as easily as a toy car. In version 0.2, we'd already got the system so that I could puppet the characters and move them around as if I were acting the parts. But in version 0.3, we needed to be able to do that in a moving vehicle. So of course that required quite a lot of changes to the entire puppeting system. And I took the opportunity to upgrade that a bit more as well and make sure I was using the latest IK system. So the plan was just for an endless road where they negotiated payment, but in the end, the script obviously required turnings and crashes and things. So that needed a full map. I mean, talk about feature creep. Full map. So we needed to use the terrain. We had to build this whole island. And then we needed to have a road, had an entire road system onto it, which uh, required lots of editing of the terrain in turn and the terrain all had to be painted and we needed buildings to surround the roads and this asset pack was brilliant but it didn't have what i really wanted which was a random building generator so instead of doing what i would guess they'd want you to do which is build all the buildings individually hand by hand brick by brick i built a random building generator and that was supposed to save me time but did it save me time i don't know at least I have a random building generator now, and if I need to build, build, generate, randomly generate buildings in the future, then I can. There's also the sports car itself, a lovely asset bought from the store. It could already raise and lower its uh, roof, and it could already open and close the bonnet and smash the window, but I had to wire all those things up into the animation system, so they can all be controlled by controls within the VR and uh, the time control system cop cars are all there too of course uh, they've been great light flashing on them i've added the lights flashing on them illuminates the scene red and green and the guns and explosives are also flashing lights we spent quite a lot of time working on the lights at the end there um, the final jump scene we found was a bit too fast i thought that was difficult and it what was required was obviously slow motion um, yeah, we didn't really plan for that. That was quite a bit of feature scope and that requires quite a lot of fiddling when you've got the soundtrack music slowing down and speeding up during the slow-mo scene. Uh, but I think in the end that was required. So, uh, you know, more time, more time. As I say, it's been up to five years nearly. Tom's done a great job with the soundtrack again. It's got this pounding drums and bass tracks and it's pumping at just the right times when it needs to be and slow and fast when it needs to be. Excellent work from Tom there. I was very pleased that that continued to get better every version he gave me. Uh, the sound effects, see, Tom did a lot of work on that as well, but uh, when it came to trying to mix them all into 3D, I was like, yeah, I, I'm not worrying about panning sirens across the, the different stereo channels. What I'm going to have to do is uh, extend the scope again. So I added the sound effects onto each individual thing, something I wasn't really planning to do until much, much later. But we've done it in this version, extending the amount of time, but hopefully that will make a uh, difference later on, I guess. But now all the sound is in 3D. It sounds brilliant in the VR mask, especially in the VR mask when you've got the full stereo sound. 
uh, not stereo, surround sound. So that's all very good. The first public screening of the film will be at the Kino Short Film event. That's on the 23rd of April 2023 uh, at the Strong Room Bar in London on the 23rd of April. So that's a Sunday uh, evening, about 6 p.m. You'll find them on the website, and our website is starshipsd.com. I'll try and keep your news up to date there, and I will also, of course, be releasing Observer's cartoons as and when the world continues to fall apart. Will we have version 0.4 ready before the end of the world? I don't know. I'm going to do some experiments on letting characters walk further than the distance of this room. So I guess controlling them with a joystick as I walk or... I don't know, experiments as I say, and version 0.4, hopefully before the end of the world, hopefully before the end of next year. <laughs>